Hello everyone, welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. I continue my pseudo career to see what may or may not be an issue in Kerbal Space Program 2 as of version 0.1.4.0. Uh, we are going to aim for interplanetary journeys and I have time warped to the window with Duna. And so we have that. Actually, technically we could probably make Jewel as well. Uh, but I'm trying to play it out as much as possible the way somebody would actually go through it in a career mode. So, uh, there is a question whether we would be sending a Kerbal out uh, or whether we would be sending a probe out. Uh, it depends on the comm system and whether it's easier to upgrade the launch pad so that we have the ability to build bigger rockets or whether it's easier to have better comms and unlock the probe core in which case we'd be sending a probe first to grab the science and get some money for flying by Duna and then unlock the launch pad. I think we'll go with, with a probe uh, since we did do Kerbals last time and we will do other Kerbal things this time. Uh, we'll see what we get to. I'm curious about the stay put, Nick. I mean, um, it actually has a reaction wheel now. It's not a very powerful one. Presumably it would be the first one that we would actually get. Um, I'm curious about what's going to happen if we don't put it with a fairing. I mean, it's a question when we're going to unlock fairings, right? Uh, let, let's just have the state put Nick. <laughs> and um, probably it wouldn't have the greatest... I mean, it actually says max range here. So 50,000 kilometers. Um, but everything says 50,000 kilometers now. Literally. So... Uh, that's not a drawback for it. Uh, I guess we might need a calm dish then. 86 gigameters seems like it's a good distance. It's extra small. Everything. Uh, I really don't think max impact should be the top thing because we're hardly ever going to want to care about that. Uh, whoa, my god. Um, look extra small to me. Uh, so, well, at least it's service mount, but it's actually 0.3 tons, so uh, this one, which is 0.1 tons, is much smaller. It, does it really mean to be extra small? Even its mount, I mean, I, I guess the actual node is small, but, hmm. Your surface mount? Your surface mount, too. I think that's probably a better bet. And it's got even longer range. Yeah, okay, anyway, we're gonna see what happens when we just leave all that exposed like that uh, to the airflow, and it's not gonna be good, but um, it'll work out. We just need to put this into orbit around uh, Duna, and we don't have the science instruments, unfortunately. Those would have to be slapped on as well. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we will have enough. As far as whether we would have any new engines, I think we'll just assume that we just have the Terrier at this point. So we don't have anything particularly special. So it's got to be horrible aerodynamically. Uh, it is just because I'm curious what's going to happen without the fairing, you see. Uh-oh. It's frozen. Uh, it froze. Uh, I'll wait for it. Granted, I was doing things pretty fast, I suppose. Actually, it's pretty rare for a KSB-2 to freeze like this, but it seems to have frozen. Okay, I think I'm gonna restart. Okay, well, I have to time warp again and try to get this back to where it is. And now we'll continue. Terrible that. Uh, okay, the menu is big now, and it fro it's no, no, it froze again. <laughs> okay, I thought they had done most of the fixes in the with the VAB stuff with construction. I never had this problem before. Uh, maybe I should make sure to have view less. Uh, I don't know if it has something to do with the menu, but... Okay, I think it has managed to get constructed this time. And we're lighter than usual. I think I'll put fins, just in case the aerodynamics of that, which are bad, um, 
are really bad. Okay, let's just say that much. Nearly 7,000 meters per second. Not a whole lot of torque on the probe core, though. So, would we have unlocked reaction wheels? I don't think so, though. Maybe we'll just deal with what it has. I don't want to bring up the shift menu. <laughs> it has 0.1, I know, 0.1 torque. Okay, we'll call this gamma and see what happens. I think. We only have 10 electric charge. This is a probe. Uh, so it is diminishing electric charge. Okay, we have tested that. I need to bring this back in and put something to recover that electric charge. And we'll probably have these. These are the ones that we always get first. On the top here. No comnet connection. I don't think that's a problem right now. And the probe core should have comms anyway, right? Let me see. Well, it seems to be launching. And we're past the speed of sound. So this setup seems to be fine. Not doing too badly considering the lack of a fairing. I think we will will launch another one and that'll be one to Jewel since the window seems to be okay for that. It might... I mean, it doesn't take much to capture around Jewel so it might be alright. And we'll put a fairing around that one just to see. Now of course me manually controlling it will cause some variations. Okay, staging. Our little terrier. And the dawn approaches. Or we approach to dawn, one way or another. Okay, I'm just gonna coast. We'll get into a 100 kilometer orbit for comparison's sake. So, if the science would uh, take more mass, of course, the antenna is probably heavier than we strictly speaking need. It depends, right? So, we'd have to see. It'd probably just be a thermometer and barometer. It'd be very light, as far as the science is concerned, on our first trip. And actually, mainly, we would probably be fulfilling the contract so that we get money for the launch pad upgrade. Assuming things work the same as KSP-1, right? Okay, more or less 100 by 100. And, uh, yeah, 3,261 in orbit. So what we will do is we will launch this with a fairing and get into the same standby orbit and see how it does. But that one will be sent to Jupiter, uh, not Jupiter, Jewel after that. So we, we will assume that we have the tracking station upgrade. It's too painful. It's possible, but too painful to try to do the transfer without uh, and the mission control upgrade without the maneuver nodes. It is possible. I know that there are some mods for KSP2. For testing, I'm not going to install them, but the one that lets you uh, manipulate the maneuver node was tempting. Okay, we have a moon flyby causing other issues. The requirements for Duna are not too different from the moon, except the whole coming back business if you're actually sending a Kerbal. For those not familiar, what you do is you want your outward path to go along with the path of Kerbin around the sun as much as possible. But if the timing is a little bit off, when you decide to leave for Duna or something, if the transfer window is a little bit off, then you end up having to tilt like this. Now, uh, if you're going to one of the planets with a higher orbit than Kerbin, you go along this way. Uh, basically, if Kerbin is going at 12 o'clock, you want to go at 12 o'clock. And then, if you're going to Eve or Moho, you want to go to 6 o'clock this way down. So, yeah, that's about it. And since the timing is off in this case, I, I don't know which way it is, whether I'm too close to Duna or too far away. But we have to tilt a little bit this way to try and get closer and closer, and that means moving the node like that. It's only mildly more inefficient, but anyway, it's more important to actually be able to get there, right? But right now, 1,059 is not much of a difference. There. Okay, it looks like we actually went too far. Oh, we've got an actual encounter there. Now I would like that one mod that lets you plot maneuvers. I missed the thing in KSP-1 where you can click the orbit 
and focus on something or select it as a target. I'll figure out the rest on a mid-course correction. As long as we have an encounter, I'm okay. And with a little maneuver node editor, I would be able to do that much better. But we don't have anything like that right now. And it's tough to see the result at the same time as you're tweaking the maneuver. Okay, so... Don't even know if this is going to be correct, but at least it's a short burn, so it's not going to be too far off. Occurs to me now that the solar panels will be blocked by the antenna, but maybe that's not too much of a problem. Okay, we are losing power on the nighttime side though, but it won't hurt our transfer burn, I think. We'll just go with what it says there and see what happens. Okay, three, two, one, go. Okay, might have been a little bit early. Let's see. Uh, I think it's too much, actually. I thought I'd turn it off early, but it's clearly too much here. Yeah, there's something off with that maneuver node thing. I'm just going by what it says. It says start burn in, right? I mean, as a regular player would. That point one torque is not too bad, actually. I think it used to be that the state Putnik did not actually have any torque. Or reaction wheel. Okay, well that's close enough to a pure inclination burn. Okay, so we'll catch up to this later. That correction there. But I want to launch that probe to Jewel. So this time with fairing, no decoupler. We will remove this adapter. It'll just be a straight fairing. Just like that. Okay. Well, it is dawned, and we will go, and launch. So last time we ended up in orbit with 3,261. Alright, past the speed of sound. Might be going a little bit steeper than I intended to here. Just cutting through the atmosphere so much better with the fairing, I guess, maybe. Okay, he's staging. And I guess we can dispense with the fairing. Um, fairing? Ooh. Yeah, there's that downside to the fairings. It seems like we ended up higher just on the first stage. But there is the question of whether the drag mitigation is worth the extra mass of the fairing piece. But yeah, it doesn't seem like we're going to end up with more delta V, so maybe the mass of the fairing isn't worthwhile in this situation. Or maybe I just had a bad trajectory. That can always happen. Okay, yeah, well we have a little bit less, but... Eh, I'll call that indeterminate within the margin of error or something. For Jewel we need close to 2,000. Shows entering SOI here. But it doesn't show any indication of an orbit when I focus on Jewel here. But maybe it's because... Oh right, because we're passing through the moon's SOI maybe? It's too much for it? It's possible. Yeah, we'll just figure that out on the mid-course correction then. We've got basically the right setup. Okay, and go. Oh, well, it's not showing an encounter or any- Oh, there we go. Um, periapsis. Well, let's see. Oh, that's as close as that gets. Okay, well, we'll do a mid-course correction. And that seems fine to me. It'll cost 93, and we'll check up on it when it gets there. Let's see, that's recharging. Okay, while it would be nice to do some Kerbal stuff while they're on their way, I think we should just complete the missions for the sake of video 
completeness. So uh, let's go to the tracking station and follow the two in. I can't seem to focus on the one that's headed for Duna. Which is this one. Let's say focus. And it's not highlighting that path at all. It's only highlighting the path and the maneuver node for the one that's headed to Jewel. Say focus. Let me go back uh, to the space center and come back to the tracking station. A1. Now are you going to show me the Duna one? Because I need that one's maneuver node first. Uh, it's not really... okay, focus. It's not really highlighting its orbit, right? I mean, but I can see its uh, encounter. I can't see its maneuver node is the problem. When we're supposed to do that correction. Well, let's just follow it out here. And that one passed through Moon SOI as planned, so that's fine. Okay, but yeah, they, they're in Kerbal orbit. But I can't see either of their mid-course corrections. So that's annoying. Focus. Uh, I'm clicking focus. Not enough resources. So in theory they might have lost power. Let's see. Let me control it. No, it didn't. <laughs> well, we'll just time warp with it here. Here we see a maneuver node. It's a little bit further out there, but it's only one meter per second anyway. Oh, we don't have any visible Delta V here. <laughs> but when we light the engine again, maybe it'll work. And we've used this engine before. That our apoapsis is reading negative is strange, because we're completely bound to Kerbal. Why is... Our uh, orbital info hasn't updated for Kerbal space, right? Because 111 kilometers is not our periapsis right now by any stretch of the imagination. Our apoapsis is still bound and therefore not hyperbolic and shouldn't be negative. Even around Duna, our orbit isn't like that. Oh, so I think it's acting like I don't have power, because I can't seem to turn to the maneuver. SAS, I mean, it's reading power there, but it's very much acting like I don't have it. Now, this is a Steam version of the game, no mods. Well, let me get closer to the maneuver. With the Delta V that we ought to have, we could easily capture even with the orbit we've got, but the the throttle is set to 100% already. Okay, now it's a little bit, but it's not doing anything. I don't know why it was at 100% at all. Being at 100%, it didn't change our orbit from where we left it. <laughs> okay, let me reactivate the engine, if I can. Activate. Activate. It says Mephalox deprived. Somehow we lost all of our fuel. And it's not just the display error that we've seen before. Yeah, it lost all of its propellant. Okay, let's see about the other one. Focus. Control. Oh, this one has Delta V. <laughs> this one has Delta V. But this maneuver isn't for a while, so we're not going to get to Duna, but maybe we can get to Jewel? Let me go try and go back to the other one. I don't know why there's 2-3 either. No, this one's out. And now it's spinning. Mind you, I had no control to turn it. Now it's uh, spinning at an increasing rate. Well, this this time has not been as smooth as last time. I do not know what caused this. I have attempted to uh, indicate the steps I have taken. But I'm going to try to avoid it now. Uh, 
Let, let's just try and get that jewel probe out, huh? We'll, we'll pretend none of that has happened. Okay, this one gives a little puff, but at least it's not dead yet. Okay, it's not recharging though. This one might just die because of its distance to the sun. We might have wanted some better solar panels. Well, for now it's recharging. That one says this lost control because of lack of resources, but we're focused on it and it didn't lose resources. So that's weird too. It's spamming that. Oh, it's constantly dropping and then going back up again? It It's looping. Is it? Oh, if you time warp high enough, you see what happens there? That's an interesting math wrinkle, huh? Well, I'm gonna do this burn a little bit early. It can still turn, so it still thinks it has electric charge right now. Unlike the other one, which was out of everything, but the electric charge still visibly seemed to be alright. We can do this burn early, that's not a problem. This is not going to survive until it gets to Jewel, though. Not with the power that it has, but, I mean, technically it's not supposed to survive until it gets to Jewel. Whether it actually survives is a separate issue, apparently. Okay, so we'll do it early. That'll be a little bit different, but it should still work out, sort of. More or less the right idea. We just need to see what the periapsis is when we get there. Um, it says 2,646 there. I don't understand why it doesn't show it here, but... Okay, so... Well, now we're recharged, but... That's presumably not going to last for long. Yeah, it's doing that thing. But if we time more fast enough, it doesn't. And those messages go away. So it pretends like it's not losing power. Yeah, I, uh... Oh, now we really have lost power, it looks like. It's serious now. No vessel control, and it tells me that outright. And this time it's serious about that. No, no. It's not serious about that. Wait. So yeah, I thought I'd get these probe missions done quickly and then we'd do a Kerbal Landing on Minmus or something, but I think I've had enough. <laughs> uh, I think I've had enough for this episode. We'll do the Kerbals on Minmus and the Moon next time. Oh, it's changed sound too. Different sounds. As it spams that notification thingy. Well, whatever it says, I'll still try. Let's see. Wait, it says no vessel control, but it's turning. Yeah, I like the engine. No. No, oh, yes. I can't light the engine by pressing shift, but I can light the engine by pressing Z. And we have made orbit around Jewel. A nice, and we didn't even have to use the moon's help. Actually, it'd be easier not to use the moon's help anyway. Uh, so, Tylo is usually helpful for that, but anyway, we've got a little orbit here. It'd probably eventually be perturbed by some moon, but that would get us extra science. 
And at this point, I guess we can communicate back home and send the science because we've got electric charge. Uh, at least a little bit. Not much though. Uh, normally the sciences take more than 10 of the electric charge. So we probably wouldn't be able to send back. But we made orbit and... Yeah, that's enough for me. So uh, we'll leave it here. Uh, we have had some misadventures. This probably shouldn't have gotten here because of the power situation. Its power, its solar panels certainly weren't powerful enough to get here. The solar input at Joule is 25 times less that of Kerbin. But well, we, we tested that out a little bit, didn't we? And then the Duna one. We lost control over even though it said it had the electric charge. I couldn't turn it at all, and I couldn't light its engines. Uh, a engine. Light its engine. And so we couldn't do the mid-course correction. It probably did fly by Duna, but I don't know in what state. Uh, so, next time we'll do more Kerbal things. But we certainly learned a few things this time. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.